Um, well, first off, you know, this time of year, uh, it's just survive in advance, right? And so really pleased with the win today. Um, impressed with Cal and what Sharman and her staff have done. You know, with a lot of young people, we can certainly relate. Um, we have some similar stories. I, at one point, I looked down and, I, and we had um, six freshmen on the floor and, between the two teams, and two of them were high schoolers. And so um, pretty amazing, you know, um, the journey that we've all been on, you know, under duress, meaning um, two or three non-conference games and then thrown to the Wolves in the Pac-12 with lots of new faces. And um, for both of our teams to be playing their best basketball this time of the year um, has has been a, a credit, you know, to both groups. And so to Sharma and her staff, great job. I thought they played an inspired game today. I thought their defense was excellent. Um, they hit big shots all day long, kept answering. You know, and then I was proud of our team for making the plays down the stretch. Um, I, I wouldn't, you know, it's clearly not, I, have, I still haven't seen a stat sheet <laughs> um, and they're hard to find. Um, but um, so I don't know what we shot, but it didn't feel like, um, you know, great uh, for, for what we're capable of. And certainly that will need to change going forward. Uh, but we survived it, uh, defended well enough, got the stops that we needed down the stretch and then, you um, you know, made some big shots. I thought Taylor's and one in the, in the fourth quarter was big. Um, Sasha's three was probably, you know, the, the basket that finished this game today, but uh, it was a, um, you know, a, a gritty win um, at 11 AM first round of the Pac-12 tournament. So we're pleased with that. Oh. I can hear, I can hear now. Hey, Scott, um, it was 58, 54. You called a timeout just under five minutes. What kind of what was going to your mind and what did you kind of tell the, the team at that point well just to relax I, I mean we had missed so many good looks um during the fourth quarter you know during that stretch of the first five minutes i thought you know we had a wide open lip we missed uh there was a deep post move we missed we missed wide open threes so i felt like we were getting the shots it's just like okay settle down and let's win this game you know and uh the team this is for many of them their first time here uh you know and so you can kind of understand it's a different environment. It's a new environment, like, but just settle down and let's go, you know? And then we also challenged them with rebounding, you know? So there was sort of the two things. They got several O boards to start that fourth quarter. And that was a, a bad trend, you know, for us. So those two things had to be reversed. So um, I think we settled in after that, uh, got the stops that we needed um, and then made shots. You, you, you said that you didn't feel like you shot all that well, that it did shoot 51%, but it, it did kind of feel like the offense wasn't quite clicking today. Was it, from what you've seen recently, is that accurate or? I give them credit for that. You know, I, I, I think it's, um, I don't know if it was clicking or not. What did we get to 70, 70? What did we score? 71. Yeah. I mean, 71 in a, in a tournament game usually means a win. Um, you know, and so it wasn't clearly as, you know, not the performance we saw the other day. Um, and so we're going to need to, uh, you know, step it up just a little bit uh, moving forward, of course. Um, but it was good enough to win today. And, um, you know, first day of the tournament, like I said, you survive it and move on. Scott, can you hear me? I can. Congratulations on the win. Um, Talia, obviously, we know what she's contributing on the court. It, obviously, when she joined the team, part of, you know, the growth of this team started right about then or a little bit thereafter. Did you, does she bring anything in tangibles wise that you felt maybe helped this team turn a corner? Yeah. Well, you know, we had actually played pretty well up until that point. I mean, we had gained a lot of traction. I felt really competed well, um, you know, I, through that 29 day break, uh, we, we competed very well at Arizona. We just hadn't had the reps to execute like you do, like, like you need to against a team that, that is that good um, on their home floors, especially. And so I thought, you know, things had really started to click for us uh, where we competed better. And then her addition, um, we weren't certain what she would bring. It was kind of a mystery um, to add a high schooler, you know, to your team at that point. But what she did bring was a secondary ball handler for us. You know, that second one to go along with Aaliyah that's comfortable with the ball in her hand. That's what, you know, we'd been forcing all up to that point. We'd been asking wings to, to play that role and out of position players. And they'd done an admirable job. They were learning, getting better. But then when Talia came in, she just added you know, one more point guard mind, you know, to our team 
obviously another great shooter from the outside and a playmaker, you know, so, so she had definitely added a different dimension. Um, you know, she's a savvy defender, um, you know, which is always a big mystery when you, when you add a, someone to your program, I don't care what year or, or what time of the year it comes. Um, you know, you never know how they'll defend. You assume it will be all new. Um, and she picked things up so quickly, um, you know, and to her credit, I'll even add this to it. I mean, she plays multiple positions for us. So not only has she, you know, learned our system from the point guard position, she's also learned it from both wing positions, which is just remarkable. So um, just one more ball handler that puts people's mind at ease, like, like it is when Aaliyah has the ball, very similar. Scott, it's a quick turnaround to Oregon, which you guys are actually used to. Um, do the second games usually play out on the floor similar to the first game, or are there a lot of strategic changes? Yeah, over the years. I mean, typically it's a Friday-Sunday turnaround um, with our rivalry game. And and so um, I think there's always a little bit of chess being played for sure and little adjustments, um, you know, it's a good question if there if there's too many I think you are who you are you know with slight adjustments and so not a lot of time to make too many changes of course uh, since Sunday um, you know but looking at the film you know there's a couple things that we can certainly clean up uh, from that game and um, I think will and so uh, that that's the fun of it uh, it's it's you know kind of odd that we've done it so many years now um, back to back like this but this is in a way it's similar you're right Hey, Scott, you mentioned the, the youth that you guys have and not the tournament experience here. Um, Sasha taking and making that three-pointer, that was the first one she took. It just seems like your, your freshmen and the younger players just play with a lot of confidence and didn't really think about the score and time and, and came through. Just that, that thoughts on that and just how well they played and, and especially Sasha taking and making that, that huge shot well, for you guys. Yeah, I mean, it was a big shot and it was kind of nice just to see her, you know, kind of nod after she knocked it down, like, let's go, you know, and, and Macintosh is a tough to cover, you know, and, and so Sasha worked hard all day uh, defending her. And so then, you know, to get free like she did on that last one, Aaliyah found her perfect timing, Taylor rolled right on time, you know, created a really good look and, you know, she's Sasha's the ultimate competitor. I mean, that's just, she loves that environment, loves that moment. That's what she's made for. Um, you know, our program, Steve, probably well enough to know we have empowered young players year after year. We have, we don't, we talk a lot about, we don't care where the game is, what time it is or who we're playing. Uh, we, we love to play basketball and, um, that's been, you know, kind of just our theme all year. And it's been that way forever. And so this class has done exactly that. In fact, in the locker room, um, I can't remember who, maybe Taylor actually pointed it out that our freshmen played so well today. They all brought great energy, um, you know, and, and played big. Savannah had big moments in, in today's game. Her defense was disruptive in the first half, um, you know, and obviously Talia had 20 today, you know, and so uh, a great sign of things ahead, but also a, a great side of things this year. Is it is it weird that you've never played Oregon in the Pac-12 tournament before? The it's only a little team, bit weird. The only team you haven't played. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. I, even before me, like never. Wow, that yeah, that's crazy. Um, and so yeah, it's always interesting how it, how it's worked out because you kind of think uh, you know those up in Seattle. I, I I picture you know those years where where we traveled so well. Um, you know that it would have been kind of cool to have, you know, that rivalry game up in a uh, key arena, you know, uh, certainly Vegas would be fine too, but uh, it is, it is strange. And um, here we are first time. Scott, it was a year ago, right after the PAC 12 tournament, when everything shut down, can you just kind of reflect on where you were, this team has, has been over this past year, what this last year has been like to now be back in Las Vegas at the tournament that ended last season? <laughs> sum that up really quick, huh? Um, man, I, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, you know, after, uh, leaving Vegas last year, going home, feeling like that team last year had played its best basketball down the stretch of the year too. Certainly it was a, a tough loss here to go home with, but we were excited about the NCAA tournament. We were, we were really, I thought we'd kind of hit our groove. You know, we had, you know, added lost players, added players. We felt like we were just kind of in a really good rhythm where roles were clearly defined and we had had enough reps to be playing good basketball. And then obviously just a, a halt, a stop 
um, go home, stay away from each other. <laughs> um, fascinating to think back to what, you know, spring was like a year ago. It's almost surreal to even think back to it, what your, all of our lives were like, and then wondering what the future held. Um, you know, then all the remote conversations, the remote communication, all the Zoom, getting, learning what Zoom was, learning how to use it, um, then it becoming so normal for us and, and then getting together in July for the first time and all these, you know, obviously weird circumstances and how we were able to work out, um, wondering what our season was going to hold, um, and then even having changes up to seemingly the last minute and what a season was going to be like. And then now, this year, getting to the point where you wake up in the morning not knowing if you're going to have a game this the day of the game, <laughs> um, because you're just kind of used to so many disruptions. And so, you know, we've learned to be very grateful. Um, this it, this team has rallied together. All that outside adversity has bonded and galvanized this group. That's what everybody's seen on the floor. We have a blast together. This team has chosen throughout, and our staff too. I give all of them a ton of credit um, for bringing a positive attitude. You know, I used the word, the term, or the phrase this week, relentless positivity is the reason this team is where it is right now. Um, because there was a reason for this team, you know, just to get down and discouraged, um, you know, and kind of go with the why me attitude or why me thought process never happened. Uh, this team just stayed the course, um, enjoyed every day and um, has played their best basketball because of it. And so it's been a crazy journey to look back on actually, and all the things that we've endured. Um, and so I'm just thankful that, you know, I've gotten to be around such great people throughout the whole process. Coach, if I did my counting correctly, you guys have not played more than five consecutive games this season. Tomorrow is game number five once again. What does it mean to you all to finally have that opportunity to possibly play maybe six, seven, eight, nine, ten consecutive games for the first time in a very long time? Uh well, from what I've learned, good things. Uh, not only that are we grateful to play, but this team just continues to get better and better as, as we learn each other's terminology. And, and you know, when we, you talk about Cal playing their best basketball right now, and you talk about us playing our best basketball right now, you've got these, you know, fairly newish teams that now have had enough reps and games. And I don't know how many total games they've played, but it's somewhat similar to us where we've played the fewest games of anyone, I think. Um, well, we're finally able to adjust on the fly because we know enough now we've been in enough experiences, you know, so for us, it just means a sign of great things ahead. And so anytime we've had consecutive reps, consecutive games, you've seen huge strides in improvement uh, going forward because of it. And so, um, yeah, let's hope it continues.